Hey folks, how's it going? December has finally rolled around and with it the new choreograph. So let's go over it and see what news this brings. First, God Slayer from December 7th, this is Exo Ifrit. Looking pretty damn bossy in there. And this one is going to be a dagger, a weapon class Fire has always struggled with. Being an Exo weapon, this should also be pretty decent, so mana level mains, rejoice. Second, on December 11th we're going to have another main quest. This time it's going to be chapters 173 to 177, so we should be getting a new map and this looks like it's going to be towards the end of this other boulders arc. Honestly, this didn't actually feel that long. The only reason why it did is due to the extremely slow updates on the main story. Proving grounds on the 13th, enemy is going to be Earth Attribute, so this one is going to bring back the cane as well as the skill damage spec spear, while also giving them a 5th uncap, as well as of course the usual weapon awakenings. I don't think I've ever used this, I think I might have used this spear once or twice, but maybe with the awakenings things might change a bit. After the Brewing Grounds on the 13th, we're going to work into a Merry Christmas campaign, starting on the 16th. This one is going to have special mini stories tailored to the Christmas season. Also, special items can be obtained in the episodes that can be viewed on the 3rd, 8th and 9th day of the campaign. These should be the usual weapon experience or summon experience materials. From December 16th, when you play a special mini story that can be seen when you log in, the previously held Christmas limited mini events will be registered in the Lyria notes. Also, they are going to be treated as side events, and you'll be able to reread the messages from the journal. That's pretty neat. Special conversation scenes from December 16th, you will be able to enjoy special Christmas related conversations with your fellow party members. Characters who have already had conversation up to the fifth year will not be added. Characters with different episodes in different versions will be added separately until the fifth year. Moving on, 12 generals meeting reprinted. That's an event rerun on December 19th. And this is the one at the Aloha Resort. The usual X guitar, as well as the Summer General Summon. We're still missing two of these, even though Katura Summer Skin didn't really look that good. Moving on, new high difficulty multi battle on December 19th. This is going to be the world high level. This quest is an 18 person multi battle. Using the battle system, I guess that's version 2, missing. The world must be liberated. It's 18 men, so it's probably going to be easy to leech as well. Last 18 men they added should have been Lindworm. By clearing the world level, you will be able to unlock the final upper limit for the world series. Necessary materials, world ideas will also be dropped, so if you're aiming to progress in sandbox, please give it a try. Oh, this drops ideas too! Yeah, that makes it really, really nice then. Because in order to host the world in sandbox, you need to farm quite a few other raids that you might not be interested in. As for the weapons, that's the fire, water, earth, wind, dark, still no light one. Now, what could a 5 star mean for these? Because all of them are pretty similar, they will bring a massive boost to attack on an EX multiplier, but the second skill bring a type of amplification for one of the three different damage types the game has. The earth one brings a skill damage amp by 10% for melee and hub specialty allies in Arcarum. If I had to guess, the in Arcarum note in here is going to disappear, so these weapons are going to be available to be used in the normal fights as well. But then we have a second limitation here, just melee and hub specialty. For earth this basically just means Anturia, Mahira, Setia, Viki, none of the main damage dealers are in here, so that 10% skill cap doesn't really mean much now, does it? Dark One brings a CA amplification by 20% for Saber and Bow specialty, there's like Yukata Ilsa, Fedil, Black Knight and Olivia, if Psy Games can ever remember that Olivia is an actual character in their games. Summer Kupitan, Summer Tabina. I think Fedil might be the only one who actually enjoys both buffs. 
20% CA damage amplified might not be that bad for her, but Yukata Ilsa deals mostly normal attack damage. Now, I would be really happy to see both restrictions gone, so these remain as just 20% CA damage amplification, with the fire one going to 15% normal attack amplification, and that's about it. Because here too, Gun and Katana characters, there's actually not that many. Like, sure, there's Kane, Dorothy, and Claudia, but Siegfried already is not really that used. Neither are Shion and Silva. Hell, Silva doesn't even care, most of her damage comes from charge attacks. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Next is going to be the Winter Campaign, starting on December 15th. This will have a single <laughs> daily free draw, Winter Campaign special logins, campaign limited quests, it's the usual Magnafest. Always on December 15th, a drop-up campaign, this time for water bosses. A bit late for the United fight, but this should be the start of a rotating element campaign. You can get double drops from your own hosts, and you will also be able to get additional rewards from the purple chests. It's going to be water from the 15th to the 22nd, and then it's going to move on to earth from the 22nd to the 29th. From the 29th to the 5th, it's going to be fire. So at least we're going to get both Guild War elements right in here. If you still need Magna 2 or any other weapons, this is going to be a perfect chance to get them. Other updates, oh, another Rebalance, a Helles, Summer version, Metera, Holy Knight, Christmas Metera, Lady Grey, that's the Halloween version, Small Dancer Anthuria. I'm actually not sure which one of the two versions this is, I think it might be the dark one. I don't think there's much to change to Christmas Anthuria. Kind of sucks that I have none of these. If this is Dark Anturia, I'm also missing her as well. New skin added to the login points on December 19th. This is going to be Percival's Throne of Fire. It's going to cost 400 points, so around 40 days of login. And yeah, that's a skin. Jesus. They're starting to go all out with these, so really, really glad to see them try. Rising and relink information. Ooh, even more. Rumble Fantasy vs. Rising will be held on December 14th, will be released on PlayStation 5 for Steam, and will be available exclusively for download. In Deluxe Edition, use all six characters that appear in the future, so it comes with the next Battle Pass as well, as well as costume skins for Gran and Jita, and the premium avatar for Vicky. PS5 and PS4 versions will also come with 72 hours of early access, 3 days, uh, kind of sucks for PC players, but <laughs> I guess we've learned to cope with this sort of stuff. Free edition. In addition, a free edition that will allow you to play the game for free will be released at the same time. So it should be December 11th for the pre-orders and the early access, and December 14th for the standard and free versions. Free edition allows you to play the game for free if you would like to try the story and battle. Additionally, you can enjoy the Grand Legend battle, so the... <laughs> Fall Guys minigames for free, so give it a try. The edition has functional limitations in some modes, please check the official website for details. As far as I remember, you only have like 4 characters available to you, and those 4 are put on a rotation, so you can't even main a character properly. But still, it's free. Warm Fantasy Showcase GBDSR Part 2 from the... from tomorrow, December 2nd. A program delivering information on Granblue Fantasy vs. Rising will be distributed on the official Granblue Fantasy channel on YouTube. In addition to new information, we will also share with you the actual gameplay by our gorgeous cast. During the program, there will be a lot of content, battle tournaments by Sagame staff, actual gameplay in the Fall Guys event, and a demonstration of the digital figure mode. Tomorrow at 18, JP time. That might be interesting. A trial come from Versus Rising and Relink will be set at Grand Blue Fantasy 2023. This should be the fest that they have in the real world. In addition, we will deliver the latest information on both titles on December 23rd, so be sure to check it out as well. This should also be when the big livestream happens. Uh, goods information? <laughs> These look great. Six dragon bean bags. Oh, there's everyone, including Gorologia. A palm-sized beanbag mascot will appear in mid-December. Uh, we have cushions, we have more dolls. They're actually releasing Makura merch. 
they're releasing Makura merch without releasing any actual in-game content for her outside of a single scheme throughout the entire year. What the hell is this? I actually like the plushies, but Jesus, she deserved a little bit more, don't you think? More menu items for the Grand Cypher Kitchen. And the day cannot come soon enough when they start releasing these skins in the actual game. Because a lot of the server skins for the Grand Cypher Kitchen just look amazing. Okay, finally, Grand Blue Fantasy Fest 2023 information. There's a couple of faces in here who look a bit familiar, but not exactly because they're related to the actual game. A special collaboration with Sanrio characters and Hololive will be held at the Grand Blue Festival 2023, scheduled to be held at the big site in Tokyo on December 23rd and December 24th. Hello Kitty, Cinnamon Roll and Popurin, who appeared in the April Fool's collaboration, will be coming to the Grand Blue Festival on venue and on stage, so either they're going to have holograms or they might actually have people dressed in costumes. I'm not a big Hello Kitty fan, never really was part of their market, but eh, it might be fun. At the venue, we will be selling cinnamon and pompurin stuffed animals that appeared in the April Fool's collaboration event, as well as goods using the original illustrations exclusive to the Grand Blue Festival. Oh, there's even Cassius here, and Doggo as well. Naru, of course, we can't miss Naru, and I kind of like that the twins are sticking together even in this art. In addition, it has been decided that the Sanrio Cafe Wagon will open at the venue. It must be such an experience to go there, seriously, because the venue is usually pretty damn large and there's a lot of stuff to see. Now, Hololive. Talents who also participated in the event Decisive Battle, Battlefield All These Stars as Hololive will come to the Grand Blue Festival. Hololive talents will appear in the main stage, including large scale live broadcasts. Okay, that's interesting, but again, I think it's just going to be holograms similar to what they've been doing for the character songs. Ain't no way they're just going to bring a screen and have the live to this there. <laughs> they will also be appearing on the Grand Blue Satellite channel, which will be available exclusively for streaming. We will make Grand Blue Festival exciting both on site and online. At the venue, we plan to sell goods using newly drawn illustration exclusive to the Grand Blue Festival. So they're only just going to be there. It's not a collab to have them in game, it's just merch. That's a bit weird, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see what they're going to cook for the main show. Furthermore, a collaboration with Gachapin and Muku has been decided for Grand Blue Festival 2023. As always, our best friends right here. Please look forward to the special collaboration available at Grand Blue Fantasy. The roulette last year started on December 21st, so if we get any information about the roulette, it's going to be before these two actually get to announce it. That's a little bit sad, but I do hope they do something similar to the last Christmas one, where every day they have mini games to play in order to win us extra rolls. I think some people were a bit disappointed due to the lack of RNG, but honestly, I just thought it was fun. Also, everyone got the exact same amount of rolls, so there was really nothing to complain about. Okay, looks like that's it. A bit of a calm month, but it's December and we've just come off a United fight, so kind of to be expected. We're going to have a little bit of time to prepare for the fire favorite one, and man, that Exo Ifrit dagger is likely going to be very, very useful. And then I don't know. I guess I'm kind of curious to see what they're going to do with the Hololive girls. Alright then, I guess that's going to be it for me for the moment. Let me know down in the comments which events you're looking forward the most, and I guess I'll see you around soon. Ciao!